If you want proof that the one speaking to Moses, the one speaking to Moses wasn't the father but Jesus, let's go to Exodus 3, verses 1 and 2. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to, to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Now guys, pay attention to verse 2. We're going to post it again. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. Who appeared? The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Let's read two again. Read it again, guys. Ask the Lord Jesus to help you to focus. Rebuke distractions. I want you to learn. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. So guys, don't forget, it's the angel that is appearing to Moses at Mount Sinai, Horeb, in the bush as a flame of fire. Do you read it? Do you guys see it? You see it's the angel of the Lord, right? Before I move on to the rest of the verses. Okay. Now let's read verses 3 to 6. Verses 3 to 6, pay attention. You don't pay attention, you're going to miss this. Verses 3 to 6. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. Now notice verse 6, which Jesus quoted. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. This is the verse that Jesus quoted. Did you catch it? And who is the one who spoke to Moses? The angel of the Lord, not God the Father. Do you guys see that? So who is the God that spoke to Moses, the angel of the Lord, not God the Father? Now, let's see what Stephen says, filled with the Holy Spirit. Who appeared to Moses as a flame of fire in the bush? Go to Acts 7, verse 30 and 35. Acts 7, verse 30 and 35. And when 40 years had passed, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. This Moses, <clears throat> they rejected, saying, who made you a ruler and judge, <clears throat> is the one God sent to be a ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. You see that? That's two. God sent the angel to appear to Moses in the bush. God there is the Father, meaning the angel is not the Father. Did you catch it? One more time, Acts 7, 35. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, who made you a ruler and a judge, is the one God, meaning the Father, sent to be a ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. Now try to convince me that the angel that appeared in the bush is the Father, when here Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, says God sent the angel to accompany Moses. The God who sent him is the Father. The angel is not the Father. Go to Exodus 3 to see who that angel is again. Exodus 3, verses 4 to 6. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush. Okay, guys, if it's the angel who's in the bush, who is the God? That's calling to Moses from the bush. Who is the God that's calling Moses from the bush? If it's the angel. The angel is called God. It's not God the Father. Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet. For the place where you stand is holy ground. Now notice verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am, who's he? The angel who appears in the flame of fire in the bush, who's the God who's speaking to him. The angel says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And then notice what it says, verse 6. And Moses hid his face, for he's afraid to look upon God. Everyone got it? 
Did everyone get it? So which God appeared to Moses as a flame of fire in the bush? The Father or the angel or the Holy Spirit? Which person of God? The Father, the angel, or the Holy Spirit? No, it doesn't say son, even though it's the son. doesn't say Jesus either. Let me try this again. Which person of God appeared to Moses? The Father, the angel, or the Spirit? Okay, so how can the angel be God the Father when God the Father sent the angel to accompany Moses? Acts 7, 38. Acts 7, 38. This is he who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai with our fathers, the one who received the living oracles to give to us. So the angel is the God Jehovah God that appeared, and he didn't appear alone. The Father was with him, but the angel was there. And how do I know the angel is not the Father? Acts 7.35. Acts 7.35. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge, is the one God sent to be ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. God is distinct from Moses and the angel. Just like God is not Moses, God is not the angel. So the angel accompanied Moses and strengthened Moses and empowered Moses and protected Moses. Who was that angel? The one God sent to be with Moses. So just like God is not Moses, he's not the angel. But the angel's not a creature. The angel's not a creature. The angel is God, distinct from God, and one with God. How do I know the angel's not a creature? Because the angel says, I am God. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses realizes when he sees him, he's looking at God and he's afraid because I'm seeing God, right? And then look what God the Father says about him. Exodus 23, 20 to 21. Exodus 23, 20 to 21. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way. This is now God the Father speaking. I send an angel before you to keep you in the way to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. So God is saying, obey the voice of the angel. Why? Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Did you catch it? God says two things about the angel. Don't anger him because he won't forgive your sins, and my name is in him. The angel embodies my name. The angel possesses my name. What I am, he is. Did you catch it? And by name, don't take my word for it, examine how the Bible uses the term name. Name can refer to the characteristics of a person, to the authority of a person, to the nature of, of a person, right? So he's basically saying, don't provoke him. He won't forgive your sins because he embodies my nature. Because he embodies my nature, he can do what God does, such as forgive sins. Okay? Everyone got that? So folks... This must be a very amazing angel who embodies the name of God and forgives sins, which is only something only God can do. Let me show you now. Go to Zechariah 3, verses 3 to 4. Zechariah 3, verses 3 to 4. Now, Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, see, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. Did you guys catch it? The angel says to the other angels who are his servants, the angel's commanding the other angels, and he says to the angels, hey, remove his filthy garments. And then he looks at Ze Zechariah or Joshua and says, I removed your sin, and I've clothed you. All right. Let me give you another passage where this angel is not a creature, but he is God's messenger, happens to be God. Now, all of this information is on my YouTube channel, Judges 13, 17, 18. Okay, read this, guys. Then Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, guys, read. Then Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, what is your name that when your words come to pass, we may honor you? 
And the angel of the Lord said to him, why do you ask my name, seeing it is wonderful? Post it one more time, verse 18. Focus. And the angel of the Lord said to him, why do you ask my name, seeing it is wonderful? Now Manoah, the father of Samson, did not know that the man standing before him was the angel of the Lord. Now, guys, listen. I need you to listen to this. He did not know that man standing before him was the angel of the Lord. So he goes, okay, when my wife gives birth, Tell us your name so we can honor you before God. You see what he said? The angel of the Lord said, why do you ask my name, seeing it is wonderful? Okay. The word pale or pali means beyond comprehension, beyond understanding. Notice what the angel said. Don't ask about my name. It's beyond comprehension. Don't ask about my name. It's beyond understanding. Don't ask by my name. Because you won't be able to understand or comprehend my name. Exactly. In fact, do me a favor, first last. Can you quote the NIV here? Look at the NIV. He replied, why do you ask my name? It is beyond understanding. Did you catch it? Beyond understanding. That's what Pali means. Now, folks, can I ask you a question? What creature, which creature, what creature... Which creature could say, my name is beyond understanding. My name is beyond comprehension. And he says, why do you ask about my name? It's beyond understanding. Okay, but now watch what happens. Manoah doesn't know this is the angel of God appearing as a man. He sees a man. He thinks he's a human being. Now watch. Judges 13, 21 and 22. Now watch. Judges 13, 21 to 22. When the angel of the Lord appeared no more to Manoah and his wife, then Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. Now notice what it doesn't say. Manoah knew it was the Lord. Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. Now notice his reaction. And Manoah said to his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. Okay, now I'm confused. It says he knew that's the angel of the Lord. That was the angel of the Lord appearing as a man. And yet he freaks out and he says, that's it. We're going to die because we saw God. The same reaction Moses had when he saw the angel. When the angel appeared as flaming fire in the bush, and then the angel spoke and he said, remove your sandals. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It said Moses became afraid because he was looking at God. Notice to see the angel is to see God. Because the angel is not a creature. He is God appearing as a man or invisible form like a flame of fire set by God who's one with God. Okay? This is just some of the many verses in the Hebrew Bible that show that this angel is not a creature. He is the Father's messenger sent by the Father to appear either as a man or invisible form to instruct the people of God, and the people of God know that this is God standing before them. He claims to be God, does things only God can do, and he's worshipped as God. Yep. And this was the ancient belief of the early church. The early church, the ancient belief of the early church. The early church, you can read Justin Martyr and others, all of them say that angel of the Lord was Jesus Christ before he became man. That was Jesus Christ, the word of the Father, before he was born from his blessed mother while she was a virgin. Clear? Do you want other examples of the angel being God and not a creature? Genesis 31, verses 10 to 13. Now read with me. Jacob is speaking. And it happened at the same time when the flocks conceived that I lifted my eyes and saw in a dream. And behold, the rams which leaped upon the flocks were streaked, speckled, and gray spotted. Now watch. Who, who, who appeared to Jacob in the dream? Notice 11. Then the angel of God spoke to me. So now Jacob knows this is the angel of God appearing to me in a dream, speaking to me. Then the angel of God spoke to me in a dream saying, Jacob. And I said, here I am. And he said, lift up your eyes now and see all the rams which leap on the flocks are streaked, speckled, and gray spotted. 
For I, this is angel speaking, I have seen all that Lebanon is doing to you. Here's where you're going to get blown away. Notice verse 13. The angel of God is speaking, and Jacob says it's the angel of God. I am the God of Bethel. Bethel is house of God. I am the God of the house of God. I am the God of that house that you built for God. I am the God of God's house. That's what Bethel means. Beth house, il. I am the God of Beth il, where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land and return to the land of your family. Not only he says, I am God, he says, I am the God of the house of God. When that house you built for the worship of God, you built it to me. That's my house because I'm the God of that house. Right? Final one. Genesis 48, verses 15 to 16. Genesis 48, verses 15 to 16. Jacob now praying for his grandchildren, Ephraim and Manasseh. Jacob is now praying to bless his grandson. Said and everyone else, pay attention. And he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me, the angel who is my savior, redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. Let my name be named in them and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac. Wait, 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 wait. Genesis 48, 16. The angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. Now, guys, I'm, I'm confused. I'm confused. Did you see what Jacob said? The angel, the angel who redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. Guys, can I ask you a question? Who is going to bless Jacob's grandchildren? Who is blessing Jacob's grandchildren? Ephraim and Manasseh, the sons of Joseph. God or the angel? Look at it again. Genesis 48, verses 15 and 16. Look at it again. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked. The God, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day. Right? The angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. Okay, now I'm confused. Why you say angel when he began it with God? God before whom I walked, right? God of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac. The angel blessed the lads. So you guys are confusing me. One more time because you're confusing me. Genesis 48, verses 15 and 16. And he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers, Abraham and Isaac walked. The God who has fed me all my life long to this day. The angels redeemed me from all evil. Bless the lads. Bless the lads. You know, it's also interesting. God before, before whom my fathers walked, God who has fed me all my days, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. Do you know, guys, you know the Hebrew word for blessed? You know what it is in Hebrew? Barich, not Baruch. Barich, singular. May he bless the lads. May he bless the lads. Barich, here it is. Singular, look at it right there. Notice it says verb, pile form, imperfect tense, third masculine singular, third person masculine singular, th the, number three, MS, masculine singular. May he bless the lads. This, did it sink in or no? Do you know why it's singular? Do you understand why it's singular? God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walk, the God who fed me all my lives, the angel redeemed me from all evil, may he, because the angel is God, God is the angel. The angel is God, God is the angel. You know who the God is that fed me all my life? You know who the God is before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked? The angel is that God, he's the God of Abraham and Isaac, my God who has fed me and redeemed me, and he will bless my grandchildren.